Anthony from Retail Edge. And in this video, we're going to tie everything together and get Retail Edge synchronizing with Shopify. So let's begin. In Retail Edge, we're going to go to Recap, go to Shopify, then go to Settings. We're going to turn Shopify integration on. The Shopify store name. That's going to be in the URL for your store. Next, we're going to grab the location ID. That was also at the end of the URL in the previous video. Enter in our API key. And enter in our password. Currently, I'm going to leave the order timer and product timer to uh, zero minutes, which means manual mode, meaning I'll have to manually run the integration. If you want the integration to run automatically, go ahead and put in a time period that you would like in each of these fields. The reset maximum order and product request last dates is used for going back in time and pulling in orders. Uh, we're not going to do anything with that currently. Next, we go to order settings. And once again, in the previous video, we went ahead and pre-configured these items. So we go ahead and select the register ID I would like to use. The clerk I would like to attribute the sales to. Select my promotion code. Enter in my stock number for shipping. And my stock number that I created for coupons. Now the sales date. So you have two options here. You can use the Shopify sales date. That's uh, when the customer placed their order on the website. Or you can use the Retail Edge post date of when Retail Edge has pulled that order in. Feel free and select whichever option that you like. Oh, one other side note on that. We've gotten calls in the support department about, hey, uh, my Shopify order, I'm not seeing it in my closing report. Or what happens if the order comes in after I've closed my store for the day? That's okay. Retail Edge will take, will take the order that has been imported in and include it in your next uh, closing. Next, go to Payment Method math Mapping. And once again, we, we pre-created this in Retail Edge previously in a previous video. So I'm going to go ahead and select my web payment medium. And if I have any more payment mediums or if you have any more payment mediums that you've created on Shopify, you would just hit this plus button and select enter in what which ones you'd like to add and then map that as well. Next, we're going to go to product settings. Now, Shopify has a compare price, so we're going to use our price was. And our Shopify sale price. In a previous video, we specified that I want to use a different price field for my web pricing. So I'm going to go ahead and select that here. And the send price option. So some customers prefer to have Shopify uh, handle their Shopify pricing on Shopify itself. If you'd like to do that, Select only send shop uh, pricing to Shopify once. If you want Retail Edge to control that, always send pricing up to Shopify. Next, we're going to select our export filter field. This is the label we created to specify which inventory items we want to go to Shopify. I'm going to leave that on export report code because that's what I entered in pre in a previous video. And the filter value is that ta is that label that you created. So I'm going to put in that label that we created in a previous video. The product type, Retail Edge will tell Shopify which product types, which categories to put them in. You could do it by department, class, or department and class. I'm going to leave that on department for now. Tags field, we went ahead and specified in the previous video. User field two was going to be where I'm telling Shopify what tags to use. For inventory management, so Shopify tracks quantity on all items that you could also tell Shopify to not track quantity on non-stock items. That option's up to you. When sold out, so you could tell, Shop tell Retail Edge to tell Shopify to stop selling items when there is a quantity of zero or when it's sold out to continue selling. Uh, that once again is an option available to you to choose for what's best for your store. The key mapping field, we went over that a little bit in one of the previous videos. So I'm going to specify item ID. 
but you can go ahead and choose stock number if you choose or UPC one or UPC two. Once again, I'm going to specify item ID because that's a random value that's not going to change provided by retail edge. There's also a, a field on Shopify for barcode fields. Go ahead and select whichever field you're entering your barcodes on. I'm going to leave that at UPC one. Next, we're going to go to product request locations. This is where you'll tell Retail Edge which location you want to drive the quantities that are going up to Shopify. You either select a single location, you can select a couple locations, you can select all your locations if you like. But this is where you control where the quantities are coming from in Retail Edge that are going to go up to your Shopify site. Once you do that, select Save. All right, now that we've entered all the settings into Retail Edge, now let's export these items to Shopify. On the recap control center screen, select export items to Shopify. Now that the product request is complete, hit OK there. Now we can go back to our Shopify store, select products. And you can see that our entire matrix family, the sample that we created before, has made it up to Shopify for, uh, for you to work on. So. There you have it. That's how you get Retail Edge and Shopify to synchronize with one another. Well, I hope you found this information useful. And if you like the content we're putting up, hit that like button, hit subscribe. And if you'd like more information about us, please visit us at retailedge.com. Thanks.